Hello, I have here the Lego Avengers Helicarrier set. It comes with 509 pieces. I paid $80 US for it and built it live over on Twitch. The set does not come with any minifigures, and I think that's perfectly fine because it's obviously nothing close to minifigure scale, but just for the sake of minifigure relative scale, there's what you can see there. The stand on this is very tall. We'll move the camera down and let you see it from a, a more normal angle. But first, I want you to just get a general idea for what this looks like all around. It is a little bit bigger in person than I thought it was going to be from the pictures, but that's of course very subjective and just based on you know expectations, which will vary from person to person. But I'm generally happy with what this looks like as, as an entire product. And it has a pretty decent build to it. It was a little bit simplistic out here around the, uh, the, the lift fans, but that's kind of expected, you know, no real surprises there. It's, it's nice and thin. They didn't want to bulk things up too much. What I was most looking forward to was around the engines. Again, we'll look at that up uh, close in just a minute. But just, again, just wanted to see the general overview of this. It's, you know, it has a pretty nice form to it. It's a little bit awkward that there are so few studs down here, but then there are so many around the edges, but they just don't have the pieces to do any better than that. All the flight deck decorations are done with stickers. So you do have to be very, very careful to line those up. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lean too much into the, the sticker discussion just yet. I'll save that for a little bit later because I don't wanna get waylaid. It definitely is a, a very, very important thing to talk about a lot. But first, let's just get through the details. You've got some aircraft on deck. The Quinjet over here is kind of recognizable, actually, actually. I, I like I like that. The bridge is done nicely. It's interesting here. This is my first time, I think, ever seeing the old trans black, which is now called. Well, it's always been called trans brown, but we used to call it trans black. Yeah, just the just the regular tint against the new trans black, actual trans black, which is very bluish in comparison between the two. It's, it's actually bluish, but compared to the brown, it looks even more bluish. But, you know, they're compatible enough and gives you a little bit of variation in that space. I do like the greebling around here. They always try for things like this. They always try to use as many pieces, as many recent pieces as, as possible. I think that a good job was done here. Yeah, just generally the level of detail is, is nice. I think this presents well. Maybe just a little bit more texture would be nice because it's so shiny with the tiles and with the stickers on top. Just something to kind of dull that down a little bit and, and break it up. But Overall, they did a pretty good job and you're not seeing anything that you don't want to see. You know, everything is covered up and sealed up very nicely. I'm not seeing any of the, the interior pieces, I'm not seeing any colors that I don't want to see for, for the build up parts, even though it actually has some very colorful, colorful parts used inside of the frame. So that's good. From this lower angle, you can see the large nozzles, which have a very simple build. There's no connection on the top. You just kind of bend that into place, but it definitely works out just fine. It was easy enough to get those lined up. That works pretty nicely. I love all the trans blue uh, around there. It goes all the way around. And once again, you know, even looking slightly underneath this thing, you're not seeing colors that you don't want to see. Sticker there for the number 64. Uh, two stickers used up here. You do want to place those close to one another. Otherwise, it'll really look like a six and a four completely separate. I like this shaping right here. That's nice. And this overall side profile, it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's got that ship feeling to it. And yeah, I like, I like the roundedness of it. And just generally, I mean, let's go ahead and pull this back, you know, from, from a lower angle. Look at that. That is nice. I, I thought after putting this on the stand, I thought that the stand was too tall, but I actually like seeing it at a, at a higher angle. And down here at the base, it does have a print. It's a very simple print, not a particularly nice print for that, but that does work. And the build of the base itself works out just fine. I think maybe a a little bit more width of the area where it connects would have been nice because this, I don't know, possibly over time, if, if you have it on a, have it on a bookcase that is, is on maybe on a rug or something, you get a little bit of vibration. I can see that loosening up. You see how it's starting to lean back, but that's a, that's a real nitpick, you know, just having a little bit better connection there. Overall presentation of this is nice from just about every angle and the build was fine with the exception of the sticker thing. This is what I have for leftover pieces. I once again apologize for having had a mishap. There may be one or two pieces, small pieces missing from this, but this does give you just a little bit of a hint of just how much bright coloration and how bright the colors can be on the inside of this. Unfortunately, you don't see that. But this, this is what we need to talk about the most. This sticker sheet here, this is madness. If you've been watching me for a while, 
You might call me a Lego sticker apologist. I hate these things a lot less than the average Lego fan. However, when I do these reviews, I'm not just thinking of myself. Like I put the stickers on here. I'm, I'm fine. I'm okay. It took a lot longer than I expected, but it's fine. But this set wasn't just made for me. This is from their 18 plus line where they're very, very, very clearly trying to bring more people into the hobby. They're not just going after the hardcore Lego collectors. They're going after and builders and mock makers and everything advanced folks. They're going after like in this case, Marvel fans, MCU fans who might have a little bit of interest in Lego. Maybe they have a Lego set or two and now there's a helicarrier. All right. And I can keep it on my shelf. It's not too big and everything. It's within an accessible price range. I'll try that out. And this is not something that you want to give to somebody in that whole class of folks, because not only is this a lot of stickers, right? This is less stickers than you can get in a, than in a speed champions set. Let's be real about that a lot less, but these are exceptionally difficult to get right because the lines are very obvious. If you don't get them lined up right, then it's very, very noticeable. It's really going to take away from the display value of the thing, especially if, if you have an eye for detail, you're really, really going to be bothered if any of these things are misaligned. And it's, it's, it's not just the center line there. We'll get back to the center line in a second, but it's these ones on the sides and their spacing relative to the next tile over. You also have some, some perpendiculars here, some laterals that you need to, to line up. I also had an issue where one of these tiles is a little bit shorter. Yeah, this one right here. Actually, they pulled it out of the mold even more quickly than usual and shrunk just a little bit at the end. That's an awkward thing. So then I wasn't able to use this end as my reference point. The other thing is that these making it even worse is that these are die cut, right? There's a thing that comes by and just slices everything at once. And sometimes it slices off set to one side or another. You may have seen that if not in sets that you've gotten in some videos that you've seen from me where things just aren't centered. So if things aren't centered, then you can't trust the edges to be equidistant to the center line in this. So you can't trust the edges. So one edge in order to actually center the line or have it equidistant to the lines to the sides, that whole sticker has to be offset, which means the next one has to be offset, which means the next one all the way down here, which skips one has to be offset as well. There are a bunch of tricks that you can use to get things better aligned. You know, don't do these separately. Uh, actually push them together to get your alignment first and then kind of rearrange things. There are lots of tricks that you can do, but you shouldn't have to do those tricks. Not for a Lego set. This is, this is Lego. This is not plastic model building. This is too advanced for the average person walking down the aisle at, at Target, you know, or who's visiting a mall to get some jeans and some, uh, some bar soap and stops into the Lego store that's that's there. It's just not right for the intended market. It's not like it's not like it's immoral or unethical. It's not an it's not an awful, terrible thing that Lego has done to cause physical pain to generations to come. It's it's just a really bad decision, in my opinion. Especially when you consider that this is $80 US, 80 euros, uh 70 pounds UK, $100 uh, Canadian for 509 pieces. That doesn't sound right. And you have to put this many stickers on. No, for $80, this should have been all prints, all prints. Now it's a lot of prints. Yes. And sure the bean counters and the design team, they know what the budget was and why and what the compromises would have had to be. I don't care advocating for you. I, I don't care what they have to deal with back there. Not, not when things are this egregious, this is way out of line. This isn't a matter of, well, you know, let's, let's, let's sit down and really, really look at why this is the right decision. It's not the right decision period. <laughs> I'm not going to give this any grace. I'm afraid the rest of the set though, otherwise it's nice especially like looking at it from the side. I like 
just the whole thing overall. And, and like I said, it's, it's definitely a little bit bigger than I expected in person. It displays nicely. It's good. It really is good. The build was fine, but like half of the time that I spent building this thing was putting these stickers on. And I'm fine with stickers. So if you like it, if you like it at this price, that's fine. But I've, I've told you what I think about it. I think it needs to be with these, I mean, with the stickers. Can I say 50? Can I say 50? Is that, is that being unreasonable? $50 US? 50 euros? That's where I'm at. 80, it needed to be all prints, period. Thank you for watching. I hope that this was of some value to you, even if you disagree with my, my opinions. I hope that I've at least presented some things for you to think about that, that help you to come to your own conclusions. If you're wondering what all this is, is about, you may have heard of it uh, by now. But in case you haven't, uh, August 8th through August 18th, 2024, if you're watching this video during August, uh, there's a fundraiser between a whole bunch of folks on Twitch, a bunch of Lego builders, ma makers and crafters. It's shifted over a little bit to YouTube as well. We're raising funds for Stand Up to Cancer at standuptocancer.org. And in the video description, you'll find a little Tiltify link if you have any interest in uh, supporting them. That would be very, very much appreciated. This is, one, this is something that we do once in a year. Big team, over 60 people, over 60 content creators are, are working on it. And our communities, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of viewers and, and fans are getting involved. And we very, very, very much appreciate it because so many of us have been either directly or indirectly, pretty closely though, affected by the big C. And Stand Up Cancer is a organization we've heard from stories while we're streaming, we've heard from stories from people who have been directly helped by the efforts directly of Stand Up to Cancer and what they do in facilitating end-to-end -end from research, making the connections all the way down to clinical trials to patients. And we've heard survivor stories. We've actually had amongst our communities people who have beaten cancer with the help of the great work of this organization and all the people that they bring together. So it's a good cause. Don't take my word for it though. Check them out, check them out independently as well, not just on their own site. But if you're interested in helping that campaign, it'd be very, very much appreciated. Again, there's a Tiltify link in the video description. Tiltify takes 5%. That's it. I don't touch it. Nobody else touch it, touches the money. All the rest of it, 95% goes directly to stand up to cancer. Of course, there are 501c3 organization that published their financials. So you can see for yourself, what they do with the funds. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.